Heath, and I am the pastor of New Praise Ministries. Thank you for tuning in uh, to our first installment of From the Pastor's Office. And uh, this is going to be a bi-weekly uh, program that you can catch up on some biblical teaching. That's what I am, a Bible teacher. That's what we're going to do, do some biblical teaching, but it'll be relevant teaching. I'm not just going to teach you theology and this type of thing, but it's going to be theology with a purpose uh, because we, we need to know what's going on in this crazy world that we're living in today. We need to know how to approach it and how what does God say about it. And that's what my agenda is and my objective. Um, I will say that uh, during this program, during the time that we do this, uh, you'll be able to send in questions and comments to our email. Let me do some house cleaning right now. I'm going to give you the email address. The, our email address that you can send questions or comments to is askthepastor.npm at gmail.com. That's uh, askthepastor.n as in Nancy, p as in Paul, m as in Mary, at gmail.com. And also our telephone number that you can leave a message with comments or questions or even to talk to me if I get the message and call you back is 216-731-8979. That's the telephone number to the church to New Praise Ministries. And that is the ministry that I'm the pastor over. Also, you can get our app. You can go to the Play Store or the App Store, uh, whatever you do, and get the New Praise Ministries app. Just go to the App Store and put in New Praise Ministries, and then you can download the app. That app is totally free. Um, it has all kind of um, things on it, like uh, it has Bibles and, and all type of Bible helps on there, and it will connect you to our website which, by the way, is www.newpraiseministries.org. So you can take a look at our website and get information that way. And that is our contact information, and I will uh, repeat that information after, we, after the lesson today. So, are you ready? I hope so. Uh, let's turn to the book of Amos. I hope you have your Bible. If not, don't worry. Um, we have my wife here, Lady Tina He. <laughs> She's going to be reading for me. She'll get the scriptures and reading for me. She's an excellent reader. I like that about her. And she knows the Bible real well, so it won't take her a long time to get those passages. Also, I'd like to give a shout out to my producer and my media man, Ray Galad, who is uh, heavily involved in what we're doing right now. And not only is he our media guy, but he is also uh, one of my young up-and-coming ministers. We're training him in the ministry. So one day he will be sitting in this chair or a chair doing the same thing. Okay? Uh -huh. So let's turn to the book of Amos chapter 8 and we'll begin at uh, verse 11. We'll read verses 11 and 12 and we'll be reading out of the King James Version of the Bible. I will tell you that we'll use different versions of the Bible, um, but all of the versions of the Bible that I use are essentially word-for-word -word translations of the Bible. I don't use translations like the New Living Translation and the Message Translation because those are just thought-for-thought -thought translations. And the Bible says that every word of God is pure and that uh, all the words mean something. So I want the exact translation, at least as much as we can get from the King, from a uh, English version, you know, with the Bible being translated from Hebrew, the Old Testament, part of the Old Testament is Aramaic, and then the New Testament is Greek. And so there's some words that don't translate into English. There's some ideas that don't translate very well into English. So the King James Version, the New King James Version, the New American Standard Bible, and the English Standard Version are versions of the Bible that I use to, uh, to study from and to teach. Okay, Sister Tina, if you can read Amos 8 chapter... Verses 11 and 12. Behold, yes. the days come, saith the Lord God, mm -hmm. that I will send a famine in the land. Yeah. Not a famine of bread, nor thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from the north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Wow. This, uh, the title of this this discussion that we're having tonight, this lesson is a famine in the land. 
So uh, the book of Amos, uh, let me give you some, uh, a little bit of background history. Uh, most commentators feel like it was written around 755 B.C. Uh, during the reign of Jer uh, Jeroboam II. Uh, the theme of the book is God's message of judgment to the Gentile world and to his covenant people, uh, Israel, who were at least as bad morally as the Gentiles were at this time. Um, Israel should have known God and they should have obeyed him. Uh, this is the story of the northern kingdom. Uh, by now, uh, Israel was divided. So you have the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Now, the, what, what that happened, that division comes from, this was the result of King Solomon's disobedience to God. He, he started worshiping false gods. He was engaged in idolatry worshiping false gods and all of that business, and he turned against God. He was in rebellion against God. Sister Tina, it's 1 Kings chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Now, many commentary, uh, commentaries give a lot of different reasons for the division uh, between the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, but the Bible says the reason this happened is because of Solomon. And she's going to read that for us right now. Read that, please. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Uh oh, here we go. That's, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's one of the big problems in our culture today. Uh -huh. That's the problem with our, our brethren who are in the church. That's the problem in the world. Strange women. The, okay, when he said, so when he, was stra when he said strange women, he wasn't talking about weirdos. He wasn't right. talking about women who were weird or freakish or anything like that. But well, strange women, she's reading out of the King James vision, uh, version of the Bible. He was just saying that they were women from different cultures, from foreign lands. Yeah. King Solomon did the one thing that God told, one of the things that God told him not to do, which was get involved with women who were not of Israel. This is one of the things that I teach in the church today. I teach the young men and the young women, and old men and old women for that matter, I teach everyone, stop getting involved with sinners. Okay, you are a child of God. What agreement do you have with sinful people? The only thing that can happen is that these sinful people will draw you away from God. So again, he says, the passage says that, Solomon loved many strange women. Listen. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, mm -hmm. women of the Moabites, Moabites. Ammonites, yeah. Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. Zidonians. I think Jezebel was a Zidonian, wasn't she? Pretty sure she was. Mm -hmm. and so these were, these were cultures that were hostile towards God. Mm -hmm. They were not only hostile towards God, but they worshiped false gods. Okay, keep reading. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, mm -hmm. ye shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their God. You hear that? God gives a reason why he doesn't want his people engaged in relationships, in marital relationships with ungodly people. You're not going to change them. They're going to change you. Right. Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm going to get involved with them because, you know, I go to church all the time and I'm a Christian and, they, and they'll become a Christian. No, they're not. They're not going to follow your example. It's more likely you're going to be drawn away towards their ideas of life rather than being drawn to your ideas mm -hmm. of life. This is what God is... Uh, promoting here. This is what God is encouraging. This is what God is warning Solomon and the people against. So then what happened? Solomon clave unto these in love. He clave to them in love. Solomon was in love with these sinful women, with these women who worship gods, who worship gods that called for them to burn their children in the fire, to walk through the fire, to make human sacrifices. Solomon loved these women. My question is, how can you fall in love with someone who hates God? Okay, well, there's a real question about your love for God. Keep on reading, mm. please. And he had 700 wives, wow. princesses, mm. and 300 concubines. He had a lot and of his wives turned away his heart. You see that? His mm. wives turned away his heart from following after God. Wow. Read on. For it came to pass yes. when Solomon was old mm -hmm. that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. Listen. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God 
as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians. So he started worshiping the goddess of the Zidonians. And after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. God said the Ammonites' God was an abomination. Solomon followed after these gods. Huh. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord. And went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Now you know what's ironic about this? Uh, that at one point when Solomon became king, God appeared to Solomon. That wasn't just at one point, it was twice. God appeared to Solomon and said, Solomon, I'll give you whatever you ask me for. Solomon asked God for wisdom to be able to judge the people and to go in and out before them and to be a good leader. And God made a vow to Solomon. This is in the fourth chapter of uh, 1 Kings. God made a vow to Solomon that, you know what, because you didn't ask for the hand of your enemy and you didn't ask for riches and wealth, not only am I going to give you all of these things, but I'm going to give you the wisdom that you've asked for. Now, hmm. Solomon asked God for wisdom. God gave him wisdom, and despite this wisdom, Solomon rebelled against God. Hmm. So that, that's, that teaches us a lot. That it doesn't matter how wise you are, godliness is more valuable than wisdom. Okay? Solomon had to, God made a promise to Solomon. He says, I'm going to make you the wisest king ever. There won't be a king that's been before you that was as wise as you, that's going to be as wise as you. And no king after you is going to be as wise as you. And yet, with all of that wisdom, he disobeyed God to the highest level. To the degree that he worshipped false gods. Okay, read on. Then did Solomon build a high place for Shemash, the abomination of Moab, and the hill that is before Jerusalem. Let me tell you something. God hated the Moabites. Hmm. <laughs> okay, I know that's uh, an assault to most of you all's system uh, because it, it doesn't register with you that God could actually hate somebody. Uh, and as we go along these uh, weeks and months, We'll show you these scriptures where God says that he hates particular people. God hated the Moabites. He hated the Moabites so much that he promised a curse on Israel. He said a Moabite can't even come in the congregation. And God uh, so loved the world. He, 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 he hated the Moabites, though. Uh, he had a good reason for them. And I'll give you the history of who the Moabites are uh, one, uh, later on. Because actually the Moabites were descendants of Lot who Lot, when he had sex with his daughters, <laughs> Lot had sex with, with his two daughters, and one, and, the, and they had, and each of them had a child, and uh, the one child was Moab, where the Moabites come from, and then the other child was Ammon, where the Ammonites come from. Two hostile nations that eventually came to cause all kinds of trouble with his, uh, for Israel, for God's covenant people. So that's that's Moabites. Okay, they began to worship false gods, and now here is Solomon worshiping these false gods. What about it? And for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. Moloch. Okay, that's Ammon. That was the other person that I was talking about. These were descendants of Lot, who was the nephew of Abraham. All right. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, uh -huh. which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. They burned incense and sacrificed to their gods? And the Lord was angry with Solomon, yeah. because his heart was turned from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice. Okay, listen, this is a lesson to us, okay? Um, I know somehow this culture, this Christian world that we live in, has God willing to accept anything. And the hmm. fact of the matter is, he doesn't. Right. God means what he says. I mean, he is God. And, and if we don't obey God, there are consequences. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Some of you are saying, well, that was the Old Testament. Well, first of all, the Bible is the Bible. And God didn't change from Old Testament to New Testament. He says in the Word of God, he says, I am the Lord. I change not. Okay? That's one thing that God doesn't do is change. He didn't be... He wasn't some uh, mean, evil God in the Old Testament, and then he's this loving God in the New Testament. He's been loving all along. But I want you to understand something about God. God is not defined per se by his love. He is